we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed the cross has brought to us a new covenant and we ought to know the new covenant so we we'll know how to behave in this new dispensation now Jesus' main statement on worship as we taught last week is found in John chapter 4. Now 20 to 24. Is in that is with his, his encounter with the woman of Samaria. Let's try and then remind ourselves. Let's go to John 4 from verse 20. I'll read through to 26. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. That is uh, the Samaritan woman telling Jesus. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, the Father. Now, so here Jesus is acknowledging that God is this woman's father. Because she's a child of Abraham. The father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Now to say the father is also to let this Samaritan woman know that there is no battle between them. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. And the big one. Verse 23. Despite all that Jesus has said. Despite all the discord that have gone on between them. As to where to worship and what the fathers have been telling them. Jesus made this profound statement. Yet, a time is coming. And has now come when the true worshipper, whether a Jew or Samaritan or Gentile, will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. No cry a sorry for no be sorry a jano whom any no cream na wong I was sorry sano and a jano every yet a time is coming. A bribi ereba. And has now come. When the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father is looking for. Why? Because God is spirit and he, his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Now listen to the woman. The woman said, you know, Jesus was kind of convincing her. But now she's coming to tell Jesus what she has been told and, uh, and learned. I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. Now this woman, despite all her challenges, is well aware that the Messiah will come. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, 
I am he. You realize that Jesus didn't dispute with this woman, but simply hinted that the time is coming when the order will change and the rules governing worship will be altered. The woman was in fact expecting the Messiah to solve this problem as to where is the right place to worship or how do we worship the eternal God. The woman was expecting the Messiah to come and solve this problem. And Jesus was very, very categorical in his response to her statement, I know the Messiah will come. And then when he comes, he will explain all these things to us. And the one speaking to you, I am the Messiah. As trying to tell her that what I've told you, nobody else will come and tell you anything. God is spirit. We can't confine God to a mountain or to Jerusalem. He is spirit. He's everywhere. He fills the earth. In fact, the whole world is in his hands. The time is coming. And has now come. The time is coming. The time is coming, he said. But it has come. The true worshippers are expected to worship God, not in a particular place, but in spirit and in truth. Apart from Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman, he also touched on the on true worship in other scriptures. For example, Matthew 15, verse 8. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. Now, you just imagine Jesus talking to his disciples. And the illustrations he makes are common ones that people can identify with the things Jesus said. Now, so have that in your, in, at the back of your mind as I read this scripture to you. Now, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Many the one no fafa and a dimini not wa kuma de a tree free me who co a chi 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 So Jesus was not altogether against what they were doing. And to Yesu and yes and na uchi the war ye no but it was not complete. And so nan ya wayen and yen ni mu these people honor me with their lips. So with their lips they honored him. And to Sancro for it the one no fafa. But their hearts are far from me. So it negates the shaha, the worship, the adoration. They worship me in vain. Their deeds negates the, the adoration. say, sorry, I was sorry. Their teachings are merely human rules. See, if the Pharisees love to spread their hands like Solomon did on the day of dedication, and then they would do it in the public squares for people to see and to know that they, they actually are sanctimonious, they worship God, they are pious. See, they had a form of godliness, but it was just a facade. My experience with people uh, these days 
have proved to me that all of us have to be careful to be good Christians. But not to just wear titles. Because some people just put on a form of godliness, but they are not godly. When Okay, let me stop. Yo, and you know me. So I say that sometimes they just put on a facade. Now, what is a facade? Any side of a building facing a public way. Now, we used to have this lady who was our number one chorus leader. And because she knew how to sing, she most often than not, we also uh, asked her to lead worship. Now, we liked her because... Uh, she she could she could lead the worship world. But that was yes a facade. Apart from all that she would do, she would still go after people's husbands. One day we went to church. The preacher man preached very good. It was an evening service, and this lady was weeping and all that. So I told my friend, we were gossiping about this lady. Hey, as for today, our sister will repent. And we are sorry, not your Kenya, Miss Semna, you who say your bomb pie, no mommy, oh, oh, Sua, Baba, we, now, me catch a madame who said, Nadia, and such a yaba. Just two weeks later. And ne no. <laughs> she never changed. Some people came, <laughs> and then this woman came to report how this our sister is disturbing her marriage. So to be adoring God alone is not enough. He is expecting some kind of service coming out of obedience. Now, when you are worshipping in, in adoring God, it is as if you love him. But Jesus says, if you love me, Obey my commandment. It is a and It is said they love to be seen by men, but their deeds were evil. They had the form of godliness, but they denied the power of God. These people worship me with, with their lips, but their hearts far away. You know, Jesus did not have a problem people adoring God. His problem was the condition of their hearts. The human being is self-aware. The human being can stand outside his actions. That is how wonderful a human <laughs> is. You see, Judas can be kissing Jesus. But he is actually standing outside his actions. He was kissing the Messiah. As in, I love this. Master. But his intention was complete. So Jesus, in our worship, pays attention to the worship. The heart. The condition of their hearts. Their deeds which didn't correspond to their posture 
in worship. When niye ya eni seni ya wobu yari ana wobu yasi nyami eni mono enko. Matthew fifteen fifteen. Ye yeah, shema Matthew asempano eti du num eni mudu num wod. Peter said, "Explain the parable to us." Peter said, "No say chere yeng ebe no asi." Are you still down? Jesus asked them. Na ose onse monso modaso enti asi. Don't you see that what enters the mouth comes into the stomach and then out of the body? Let me just take that again. Don't you know that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. And now, and these defile them. Now, a dear beer, a free nipper and num fear, dear no. So, when you nipper na kumemu, na and no and a good nipper hoofy. So, when he says their heart is far away, then he's talking about these that come out of their heart. And he said, Oh, cousin Wakuma, I think quite chichi, I know can near ya if you are coming to me. Now, the big one, verse 9. I've been a cassipa in your mudun chrono. Shall we read together? Mommy and kind mumwe, wait to me. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, and adios. <laughs> Jesus expects and therefore teaches the one adoring him to follow up with genuine service to him. Yes, we shall cry. So be biara or dinner no fafa a be na yeno or the abra bo crum crum so a be dear. So in true worship, it is not enough to bow in adoration, it must be followed by genuine service or genuine obedience to the master. And to no query or sorry no. And says a ya no fa fa nko e se se ya di abrabo kron kron ani abrabo a e fata or sorry so ban no e di atire. Otherwise it is hypocritical. Anya sa pe na ya ye nya atwo. Now listen. Afiti ha. I've always been illustrating this that if he saw me and he bowed down to me. The bia mi chire mu se se ohunu mi na okoto me. Once he bowed down to me, it means he reversed me. He's adoring me. This is the Shaha position. Then I told him to lift this and put it at the back. In the back of the room. Now, for me, catch and say, "On fast day, no fun could see a day no extra one more." He didn't do it. Not when you pet. So, what was the use? He bowing down. And you're sorry, you're sorry, man. No, not a home fast war any sign. Go to one, and fast war be in the If after bowing to me and you can, you wouldn't take my instructions. Then why do you call me Lord? Now, sorry, you know, 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 See, men ought to lift their hands in worship, but they must lift holy hands. No, because I'm going to say, as I said, you know, you know, and my one, and I'm sorry, you know, and 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 sorry, People ought to lift their hands in worship. In honor to God and in adoring God and worshiping the true God. But then when the hands are not holy, the holy God may turn his eyes like that. First Timothy two eight. First Timothy two eight. Let's quickly read that together. Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray. 
Lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. And to me, per se, Mary, my bomb pie, one man, you know, a man, sir, a hootier so, a buffo, and now a king, yeah, a So lift holy hands. And the man, sir, crumb, crumb, so. But check the condition of your heart. And so, she said, you're welcome at you. Lift holy hands. Man, sir, hootier so. Check the condition of your heart. She said, you're welcome at you. The writer of the book of Hebrews puts it in. It this way. Nia or chile Hebrew Homano or Chilemusei. Hebrews thirteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Mommy and Yantamunko Hebrew for Homano, a Tidumiansa, and you would do no any dunsian. Hebrews thirteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly professes. His name that openly profess his name. Enti mama yemfa Christo so emo nyango pong aye ya for the da eni ano fafa e boni abodi no. Now God is interested in our sacrifices of praise. Kwa samso nyango pong ope ya ye ye afodi o. And do not. The next verse. You see, the next verse is a conjunction. It begins with and. So add this one. And do not forget to do good. So God loves the sacrifice of our praise, but don't forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, you see the two, God is pleased. So the shaha is good. And the avodah is good. The two sacrifices, God is pleased. And under the new covenant, worship as in bowing down, shaha, and service as in avoda is fused into one. It's, it's about all you do. In other words, in the New Testament ministry, worship involves all we do, whether in church or out of church. When kneeling before him or at the workplace. Now the whole of our life is supposed to be worship unto the Lord. How do I know that? Romans 12 verse 1. 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 Romans 12 just the verse 1. Therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So Once say, you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy to God, then he says that this is your true and proper worship. Not lifting your hands and adoring him, only to use the body for other things that aren't holy. When you mean she can say you be my and such way she no, you didn't pay you no. Aye, you believe for fraud. Until Roman four woman H M say, until any anom, me do not yanko pomo bro. Who knows me too much for say? Home farm money pay you and see how sir for dear a tear say a year crown crown a so any yanko pomo any na any money me summa a journey a woman. And let's take the big one. A few years ago, the pan. Colossians 3.17. I want you to go home with this test. Whatever you do, whatever means nothing exempted, whatever means all you do, whether in word or deed, and I this means anywhere, everywhere. And some more, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do 
Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is the New Testament kind of worship. Whatever you do, at any place, anywhere, to all. To bring glory to God. Do all in the name of the Lord. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Why is this so? Join us next week. As we discuss how his substitutionary death has redefined worship. Bra, ye wa, we see a name, a wono, as a son, or sorry, a